Hello, and welcome to the second lecture for section 2.1, talking about first order linear equations. In this video, we'll talk about the methods we go through to sort of solve these first order linear equations, as well as talk about the idea of integrating factors, which is the process that we use in order to solve these equations. We'll define what they are, talk about how they work, and why they kind of make sense as a thing to use for these kinds of equations. All right, let's go ahead and get on into that. So if we look at the equation, a very simple equation that's just dy dt equals t. This is really easy to solve, right? It's separable, it's linear, everything's nice. I can more or less just integrate both sides and get a solution, right? If I integrate both sides, I get something that looks like y equals t squared over 2 plus c, and then we're good. I have a solution. It was very easy to find that. You want to sort of extend this idea of sort of just integrating things to more general first order linear equations. So if I have another function, say a mu of t, let's look at what happens if I take the derivative of mu times y. Well, this is just the product rule, right? If I do the product rule on this, I get mu times dy dt plus d mu dt times y. But this looks decent, right? What do our general first order equations look like? Our general equation looks like dy dt plus p of t y equals g of t, right? That's our general first order linear equation that we've been talking about for the in the last video. Now, if I can find a way to make this fit into this, then it'll be in good shape. Why? That's going to replace this with just a d mu y dt. And now we're almost like we were before. We just had a derivative on the one side and a function on the other. And I can just integrate both sides and move from there. So if I want this to work, what do I need to have happen? Well, if I take this equation here, and I'll both sides by mu, what do I get? I get that then, I get then that mu times dy dt plus mu of t p of t y equals g of t times mu of t. Right? That is multiplying through this equation by mu. Now, I want this to match the d mu y dt from above. So what do I need? I need to pick mu so that d mu dt equals p of t mu of t. Right? If I can do that, then this term matches this term. And then we're in good shape. So if I can do that, then what do I get? Then my left-hand side just becomes d mu y dt equals g of t mu of t. And then as before, I can just integrate both sides. So mu of t y of t equals integral g of s mu of s ds plus a constant. And then I can just divide both sides by mu. And that gives me a solution for the equation no matter what. I took my p, I took my g, and I can find an equation like this, where mu satisfies the differential equation d mu dt equals p of t mu of t. Now it looks like a great formula, but the point is you should not just memorize this formula. While the formula looks really complicated, the ideas that we used to get there were not that bad, right? I wanted to make a product rule formula match my equation. So what did I do? I looked at this and said, okay, this is the ODA I need to solve. So solve this. Hint, this is like a lot of the stuff you solved in the last video for your um, video problems. I have mu and I have a mu and I have a p of t inside here. And 
then it just sort of falls out. Then I get that this is a full derivative on the left-hand side, equals some function, I can just integrate both sides, and then solve from there. So this mu is called an integrating factor. Why is it called that? Because I multiplied both sides by mu, and then got something that I could just integrate. Right? Once I multiplied both sides by mu, because it solves a certain ODE, I got a derivative on the left-hand side, and then could just integrate both sides and be done with it. So that's how these problems sort of work. You find your integrating factor, as in something that solves this equation here, this equation here, and then you can solve your original ODE just by plugging that in, multiply both sides by mu, simplify the left-hand side, and go from there. Now, if I have more simple situations, if I have a specific P, then I can solve things out more explicitly. For instance, if I have P of T is just a constant, this was one of the problems that was in the last video. P of T is just a constant, then I get D mu dt equals a mu, which has solution mu of t equals e to the a t. In this place, there would be a constant in front, but I don't care about the constant because it's going to cancel out at the end anyway. If I have p of t is t, you also saw this one last time. I have d mu dt equals t mu which gives me that mu of t is a e to the t squared over 2. Now, what you'll notice here, for some of these, depending on what g is, I may not be able to integrate this expression in here. And that's fine. Sometimes you won't be able to. A lot of times you will, and you'll be able to see, okay, this simplifies and I can integrate. But if you can't, that is a possibility. For instance, e to the t squared over 2, is not integrable normally. So if g was 1, e t squared over 2 wouldn't be able to integrate that. You just wouldn't be able to, and that'd be it. You'd have to leave it in this integral form and just move on from there and be done with the problem from there. All right, so that's the basic idea of how you solve these equations integrating factors. The next video will do some examples of that. But here are a couple problems for you to look at. Here's one problem for you to look at now. Take a look at solving this. Um, it uses the same method that we we're talking about here. So I'll write that up for you right now. All right, so here's a problem to look at for this section. Um, so take a look at that. If you want to look at the next video first to see how the examples work out, you can take a look at that. Um, so look at this problem, solve it, put it on the worksheet, and then we'll work on a lot more of these problems tomorrow in class. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.